Welcome back everybody. I recently did an accuracy test with the uh, Arsenal SLR 106 and everybody has beat me up to do a uh, accuracy test of the barrel rifle here. Um, I do have one. We've showed it in many videos so I figured why not we'll break it out. Now one reason I haven't actually reviewed this rifle is that in the past I've had actually pretty bad accuracy from it. I know these are uh, have a reputation to have really good accuracy. Um, I've only used two different loads in it, the Freedom 55 grain and then the uh, Federal M193. Sorry about the wind, guys. Um, but basically, the Federal 193 was really bad in terms of accuracy, like 5 or 6 MOA, and the Freedom was about 3 or 4. But we're not going to run either one of those in it today, so we'll try some different loads out and see if it likes it a little bit better. Um, so first up, we have some Wolf 62 grain steel case stuff. Uh, in the SLR 106 comments, you guys were saying that you wanted to see steel case running it because it was AK platform. Uh, okay, so we'll do that. And then a couple of uh, loads that should tighten it up a little bit. Targets downrange at 100 yards. And uh, we're using a CTK precision rest. We have the uh, primary arms. This is the 4 to 14 uh, scope in there with a Geissele mount. We have the uh, top rail. Uh, snug down pretty tight. It is adjustable for those of you that don't know on the barrel rifles and uh, it's pretty darn tight to make sure we're not having that piece move on us. So uh, that should do it. Let's see what we can uh, get out of it. Well, I guess it likes it better than the two loads we've ever run through it before, so that's a good sign. Uh, that's definitely a better group, the best one this rifle's ever shot. So hopefully these two loads just make it even better. So what we have here is some uh, pretty munitions. This is a 69 grade hollow point bow tail ammo. A little bit heavier weight, and we'll see how that does. Um, we've gotten good accuracy out of it before in several rifles, so high hopes after seeing that group actually with Wolf. So hopefully this one continues to improve. We got a storm rolling in, so I hope it uh, stays away until this video is over. <sighs> One thing about uh, the little short mags, sometimes they're hard to seat the rifle. I think I've talked about that before, but there you go. Got a fly trying to eat me. And they bite hard out here in the country. Well, I didn't see that first one. You guys might have, but uh, I didn't see it. So we'll see when we go down there. Next up, we have some uh, Gorilla ammunition. This one is their 55 grain Sierra Blitzkrieg round. Uh, new manufactured stuff. And uh, we'll see how it does. But for sure, one thing we've already learned in this video is, uh, which <laughs> I know, but I've never really tried this rifle out to see what it likes. But definitely, if your rifle's not shooting well, try different ammunition because you never know if some rifles really do shoot much better with different loads. Fly is motivated. Let's go check them out. Time to measure and see what we actually got. First, we have the Wolf 62 grain steel case stuff. Center to center, we're right at two and a quarter inches on that one. Then I believe we had the freedom over here. I see the first shot now. On that one, we're at three and a quarter inches. And then the uh, gorilla. We're the same on that one, three and a quarter inches. So um, it's good that 
this one, at least with the wolf anyway, shot a little bit better um, because in the past, like I mentioned, I had not been happy with the accuracy of this rifle at all. Um, some basic things about the uh, barrel or archer, depending on when you actually pick one up, uh, they were imported in a few different configurations, but um, this basic rifle here is the military service issue rifle for Poland. Got a cold hammer forged barrel. It's nice and lightweight up front, which I do like. We have a proprietary muzzle brake, which I generally don't like. Uh, again, sorry about the wind, guys, if it's if it's uh, coming at you. Uh, lower handguards, generally most of your AKM ones will fit. The upper is proprietary to the rifle. We do have that optics rail on top. Like I mentioned, uh, it's very solid. Uh, unlike a lot of AK optics rails out there, it's actually milled into the front trunnion and then you lock it down on the back on the rear trunnion. Very, very secure system. You do get a chin weld with any kind of optics like you guys saw. You could certainly use lower rings to minimize it. Um, the safety there is an enhanced safety, which I think really in 2017, every AK on the planet should come with that. There's no reason you can't add that little tab. It really does improve. Uh, the rifle. The uh, collapsible buttstock in the rear is nice as well. Uh, gives you the ability, of course, to extend or shorten your length of pull to what you actually like. It has that IO grip, which while it looks kind of stupid in my opinion, um, it does feel okay in the hand. I'm not a huge fan of it. You know, if I was going to shoot this rifle a ton, I would definitely throw a mag pull grip or, or even a tango down on there for sure. Um, AK sights and uh, overall very, very good rifle. Uh, it's never had a single malfunction of any kind, and it has a reputation for being a one MOA AK. I've, I've seen a million reports out there on the internet of that, uh, but again, I have never seen it, not with my rifle. Uh, this is a sample size of one, and uh, the best we got here was, what, two and a quarter inch groups, so uh, maybe with the right load, um, but I haven't seen it personally. Um, these rifles came in over the last few years, but it seems that they've dried up in terms of imports, at least as of right now. Uh, they varied anywhere in price from, I believe, when the archers first came in, they were going for like $1,500. Then they brought the barrels in, which is this configuration that you see right here, which is a little bit closer to the military rifle. Uh, those were going from really, they varied widely, anywhere from $1,000 to $1,400. For a while, I think they were going for like $900. But um, none have come in in at least over a year, if not more, and uh, they're getting quite expensive. So if you're looking for one of these used, uh, it's it's significantly more than that. Uh, probably you're looking 1600 and up. Wouldn't be surprised at a $2,000 rifle. So um, they're interesting rifles. They're cool rifles. They have some uh, military, you know, uh, bravado to them or military uh, history to them is probably a better word. Um, so you'll see them out there. And the Polish have certainly been one of our best military allies from a U.S. perspective over the years. So a lot of guys have seen them and wanted to pick one up when they got home. And uh, you can. There's a few of them in the country, just not a ton. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's the accuracy test of this rifle. Um, again, mine just hasn't been what you hear out there on the internet. So that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions, you can always post down below in the comments section. But really, uh, over at my Facebook page here is always the best way to get me. Um, YouTube, sometimes I just don't see your comments. Uh, and on Facebook, I probably 95% of the time do. So that's about it, guys. We'll see you in the next video.